Hi everyone, welcome to the June Kawe Craft Kit box and tutorial video. Uh, this month is Palmer Clay, that's the theme. So in this video, I'll show you what was in the box and then I'll also, also, blah, 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 also <laughs> show you uh, three tutorial uh, projects that you can make from the box. So first we have the actual Palmer Clay itself and this is Sculpey 3 Palmer Clay in 12 colors and it's a good variety to get you started. It has all the basics and primary colors. Then we have this set of acrylic paints. So there's uh, six acrylic paints plus a brush that comes along with the set. So we'll use it to color the clay after we bake it. And then this is an Excel craft knife and I chose this one because it there's uh, replaceable blades that you can buy in the future should you need to do so. This is a double-sided set of dotting tools and shaping tools. This is a baggie full of embellishments that we're going to be using in a tutorial project. So can you guess what we'll be making? <laughs> a pair of detail brushes. So these are sizes 00 and then 000 for really fine detail work on the polymer clay. We have this needle tool and so this is for creating like details and dots in the clay and one thing I really like about this needle tool is that it has a protector over the pointy part. And then this is the last supply for the box and so this is a holy grail item for me for Palmer clay and resin because it is a really nice glossy varnish and it's easy to apply. You don't need another brush because it has its own applicator and it creates like a really shiny finish which you'll see later. And then here's the bonus item. It's an illustrated pin by my sister and it is really cute as usual. Okay, so we're going to be starting with the first project now and I'm going to be starting with the easiest one and then moving into harder projects. I hope I have a good variety for the different skill levels out there for my subscribers. I've been doing Palmer clay myself for about four years now and I learned everything I know from YouTube channels, from Instagram accounts, from online tutorials and blog posts. So I'll leave all of the like uh, videos and blog posts that I, you know, I, I watched or I read the first when I first started so that you can have even more resources because there's a lot to learn and this video probably won't cover everything such as like how to clean your polymer clay, uh, how to store it, that kind of thing. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. For those of you that this is your first time uh, making things out of polymer clay, welcome. <laughs> I hope you have a lot of fun. Don't get frustrated. It takes a lot of practice. Um, let, email me or let me know if you have any questions. I will get you through it, but it's going to be a very fun and rewarding hobby, I think, if this is your first time. But basically, polymer clay is a clay that will not cure, will not harden uh, until you stick it in the oven and bake it as if it's like a pastry but not really please don't eat them <laughs> different polymer clays uh based on the brand and that and the line of clay will bake at different temperatures and you'll bake it for different times so always follow the packaging instructions um on that front and then i think everyone kind of has their favorite polymer clay brand i personally like sculpey 3 which is what is in this box but um, if you want i recommend experimenting with different uh, brands different lines if you want to uh, i particularly like this one because it's easy to knead and manipulate the other clays start out very hard uh, once you get them you know uh, like warmed up it's a little bit easier um, but yeah it just depends because like different clays will be easier to manipulate or harder to manipulate so it's like it's really a personal preference thing um, but this clay I, I chose this clay because I think it's great for both beginners and more advanced um, clay users if that makes sense so as for the other supplies and tools in the box, I curated it to be a kit good for both beginners. So it includes all the basics you need to get started in polymer clay. Um, but I also made the items like um, my own, the items that I use like every single time that I make polymer clay. And so like if you're, if you try polymer clay before or you're more used to it, I hope that these items you'll find like new favorites um, for the supplies. And like if you, you know, if you need new supplies, I hope this was a good way to give you kind of like a restash, if you will. Okay, so moving along to the second project, we're going to be making a miniature pie. 
And there's a few ways you can do this. Um, I found that a uh, method that I like is to make them inside of a bottle cap. And so I just take some beige, you know, pie crust color clay and then work it inside the bottle cap until it's all full. And then taking the Excel craft knife, I'm going to carve out the center and so it'll just be um, like a circle most of the area of the clay out. And then after I carve it out, I'm going to like I carve it all the way to the bottom and take it fully out. But then I'm going to take a bit of the clay and like push it back down flat so that it creates the bottom crust. So you can feel free to leave it inside the bottle cap if you have a bottle cap lying around, but I actually like took it outside of the bottle cap by kind of like carving around the space in between and like it's not a very like precise or clean method because it kind of ends up creating a bit of a jagged um, like crust, but um, that's the easiest way I found to do it. I'm sure there's other methods of creating the pie crust, like if you were to just sculpt it um, the pie shape and then kind of like use a needle tool to make those like indents um, by hand you could do it that way as well so now I'm starting to make the filling and so I'm going to be making this into a blueberry pie so I'm just mixing up the color that I want and it's almost like this um, black color with a little bit of purple because that's kind of how blueberry pie looks once the blueberries are baked they're not really like blue <laughs> they're more like purple berries but anyway and then once I have the color that I like I'm gonna start rolling it into really thin uh, snakes or coils of clay and this next part is probably my favorite or I was really enjoying <laughs> making these tiny blueberries so I just made really thin snakes and the way that I do like uh, super thin snakes is like I kind of start out with the clay and then I make it um, you know as thin as I can but then sometimes it gets to be too long to where it's hard to manipulate so then I'll cut it into like into half and then like roll those halves out again if that makes sense just so it doesn't get like super long and unmanageable but yeah and then once I have the coils um, to the size I want I go ahead and chop off you know uh, a small portion and kind of try to make it even the sections that I chop off and then once I chop them off I roll them into like a blueberry shape well it's just like a spear but yeah so then as I roll them into spears I just fill up the pie crust yeah <laughs> it's actually like really fun to do like I really enjoy making these pies uh, I'm definitely going to have to be making more flavors sometime soon but I just fill up this pie with all the little blueberries and then I fill it until it's pretty much to the top but not quite because um, we're going to be adding the top crust. So for the top part of the pie, which I believe this is referred to a lattice pattern, um, I just flattened some of the same color of um, clay as the crust and then I cut some um, strips. Well actually like I rolled out some coils and then I flattened the coils and then I cut out um, let's see one two three four wait five six seven eight I cut out nine um, like smaller um, portions of that because there's gonna be nine kind of like nine um, strips so I've never baked a pie like this before so I had to look up how to get the lattice um, look on top of the pie but it's kind of just like a bunch of like it's kind of like braiding or different steps to where you like go like weaving I guess you would call it and so I just found a wiki article on how to do it and I followed that and then um, I got the end result was this lattice shape on top and I think it looks really cool so then the last step I did before I put it into the oven was I trimmed off the excess parts of the strip and then I used the blending tool to kind of like um, blend it or make it like match to the outside crust. And then I stuck it in, into the oven for about 10 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes and I didn't um, put it in for the full cure time because I did what's called a pre-bake where you kind of, where you bake the piece but only like halfway. And there are multiple reasons why you would want to pre-bake. 
your creation but in my case I did it so that once I removed it from the oven I can cut it like I am doing here and I'm going to be cutting it into slices of pie and if I hadn't baked it at all and tried to cut it into slices of pie my concern was that it would be like too um, gooey and mushy and like when I used my blade that I had it would actually like kind of make um, really um, uneven cuts and wouldn't be as clean as if I when I'm cutting it here when it's like a little bit more um, hardened and then once I was done cutting it into the slices I put it back into the oven just for another 15 minutes just to fully harden and bake it and then I ended up using some purple UV resin which is not in this kit but it was in a previous kit and then if you have access to UV resin um, this is like kind of an example of a mixed media project you can make but I just um, put some purple resin on the sides of each slice and it kind of like makes it look gooey like it's actually like baked and the you know makes that jam look <laughs> so yeah I just did it on top of a upside down silicone cup so that the excess I could just like um, peel it peel the excess off so here are the finished slices of pie and if I wanted to I could have made them into individual charms with, which would have been really cute to make jewelry but I'm planning on making them into a phone grip possibly putting them onto a phone grippy so yeah we'll see but that's the end of this project and so the final project we are going to be making a Maneki Neko or a beckoning cat and that is what the illustration of the pin this month is of like a Maneki Neko and yeah so I'm gonna start with just some white clay and then I'm going to kind of judge how much clay I need based on the size of the little embellishments that were included this month so I'm going to be making this particular um, figurine out of or using that larger coin of the two coins that were included and then yeah so kind of judging based on that and then I need the I need the clay and like warm it up and then we will be good to go to start sculpting so in, or in order to make the body which I'm going to start with first is I take some of the clay and then I make like this triangle shape almost so that and then I like I roll it onto the table flat so that it'll be able to sit up and be able to stand on its own and then throughout this I kind of check with the coin and the bell and everything that um, it's going to be sized in proportion to the embellishments that I'm going to be adding later and then also that like once I start making the head and um, all the other parts to make sure that once I put them together they're like relatively in proportion of course it's a little bit exaggerated and um, you can have your own artistic liberty and whatnot but just kind of make sure that it doesn't look too or like it's up it's to your liking I guess the best way to put it and then I sculpt the arms and the legs, or I guess the four legs of the cat. I sculpt using um, the coils and I make the bottom legs a little bit fatter and um, like shorter. And then the one beckoning arm and leg, or like the beckoning, I guess it's an arm. <laughs> uh, and hand a little bit longer because it's reaching over um, but yeah and my a general piece of advice for polymer clay is to work in pieces um, so instead of like um, uh, going like one by one with the limbs like make the body and then like attach the limbs and then like attach the head and like kind of like working as you go um, work in pieces and then at the end kind of like attach everything together that way you will be less likely to like smush something and also you can like be more like detailed on the individual parts and kind of like work in segments and if you don't like that um, like part that you've made you can kind of like scrap it and make it again without having to make the whole creation again so in order to make the head next I'm going to be making an oval shape and then making two ears so I'm cutting out two equal parts from a coil and then shaping those into triangles and then using a dotting tool or the knife or the needle tool kind of like carving out a part of the or like the middle of the triangle if that makes yeah that yeah to make like the little um, the fold of the ear is I guess what you would call it 
I also add a tail on the back, which is just like a short kind of thick coil onto the back. The tails of Minekinekos are actually really small if you look on the back of one, but yeah. And then after that, I attach the head as well and then just kind of like blend everything together. So then the last little detail I'm going to do before I bake this piece is to make the um, like fingers of the paws. Yeah. They're called fingers, right? On paws? <laughs> Sorry. I'm <laughs> being so weird. Um, but yeah, so just to create um, those little like uh, details on each of the paw and then just getting the positioning of the arm that I want to, to, to be in for the beckoning part. And then also putting the coin back on top to make sure the coin will still fit. And then actually like pushing it a little bit inside the um, paw that it's going to hold so it creates like an indent. So that when I glue the coin on later, it kind of like slots in um, and it kind of fits together nicely. And I ended up baking this for an hour and 15 minutes. And the way I did it was you measure the um, like fattest part of the sculpture when it's um, standing up. And I measured it to be an inch and a fourth. And so I baked it for an hour and 14 minutes according to the Sculpey 3 um, baking guidelines. And then here is just a quick um, speed through of me painting the Maneki Neko. And I just used a reference photo as well as the illustrated pen to kind of get the coloring of like a classic Maneki Neko. And then one thing I want to point out is that if you get paint on a part that you don't like or you make something too big and you want to do it again, wait till it dries and then you can scrape it off using the X-Acto knife. Just be careful not to scrape off too much or you will, you know, scrape off the clay itself. Yeah, and then to attach the ribbon, the bell, and the coin, uh, I use E6000 and I use my needle tool to kind of like get it um, the glue onto the needle tool and then get it onto the clay or to the embellishment and yeah cut the ribbon to the size that uh, wraps around the neck of the cat. I ended up not being able to wrap it around all the way because the beckoning hand um, got in the way so I kind of like just wrapped it around that way and kind of you know didn't go all the way around. And then I'm using the black acrylic paint and my needle tool to write out the kanji or the Japanese character onto the coin of the Maneki Neko. And then the character that's on these uh, Maneki Neko coins uh, is, means 10 million ryo. And ryo used to be the currency in the Edo period for Japan. And it was a lot of money. Um, I mean, it sounds like a lot of money still, but yeah, it was a, quite a big fortune um, back then. And so basically um, the symbol means um, a lot of money or fortune. And then the last step for this project is to go ahead and seal everything in and to add a nice glossy varnish. So I'm using this um, varnish that was included in the box and this will help protect the acrylic details that we painted on uh, including the uh, kanji on the coin and then I'm also going to um, put it on the ribbon so I'm going to be applying it everywhere and I do this kind of like in two steps so I'll like do one side wait for it to dry and then flip it over and do the other side and it takes 20 to 30 minutes to dry so not too long uh, I'm sure you could find other methods of drying it or uh, like painting it and letting it dry all at once such as if you like were making a charm you could hang it from somewhere and paint on the varnish and let it dry hanging that way but yeah and then after it dries that's it for this project and we're done with the Maneki Neko so that's the end of this video if you made it all the way to the end thank you so much for watching uh, I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, if you still have questions about polymer clay, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them or link you to some helpful like resources. And yeah, so if you are not a subscriber to Kawaii Craft Kits yet, of course I'd love to have you. So I'll leave information uh, about that below. But otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.